Good evening. I'd like to call to order the July 24, 2014 regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District. We'll start with roll call. Charlie Anderson. Here. Nick Rico. Here. Ben Viola. Here. Rob McSorley. Here. Seth Garrison. Here. And Dave Nelson is absent. I am Chairman Jason Greenleaf. And the first order of business this evening is the approval of the June 26, 2014 regular monthly meeting minutes. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any errors or omissions found in the group? Um, one minor one. <coughs> <laughs> he might have found it for me. I found one but couldn't find it. A comments. This should be an apostrophe at the end of Mr. Hughes' name. That was not the one I found, but thank you. Any other errors or omissions? None. All in favor of approval? None opposed. We'll move to the superintendent and operations report. Dave? Um, a copy of the... Uh uh, the, the monthly report of operations for the month of June is included in your packet. Your, our average effluent flow for the month was 1.25 million gallons per day. Our effluent qual quality was well within our permitted limits for all parameters. We achieved 96% removal for BOD and 97% removal for TSS with average effluent concentrations of 11 and 10 milligrams per liter respectfully. A copy of pump station flows for the month of June is included in your packet. Uh, the work in and around Seal Rock Drive um, appears to have reduced the amount of II getting into our system. Additional work still needs to be completed to finalize this work, but they seem to have identified the source of that inflow and have um, at least temporarily solved it, and they will in the near future be uh, doing a permanent fix on that. On July 1st, we had a smoke detector activate at uh, pump station stick 6. Uh, which resulted in um, uh, the smoke alarm going off and the fire department responding. Upon arrival, when they opened the doors to the pump station, smoke was pr present. And upon an initial investigation, no source of the smoke could be found. So we isolated the pump and, and placed another pump in service. At no time during this event did the station stop operating, um, and we had no uh, overflow of any kind or near, even near one. As a result of this event, I am working with the fire t department to assess the alternatives for our sprinkler system in that station to ensure continued operation of the station in case of uh, some type of uh, event similar to this, where, where the sprinklers would activate. Uh, we met with Clark Insurance this, uh, uh, this past month to review our renewal. Our insurance costs will be increasing about $1,700 this this uh, uh, coming policy year to $51,672. I am working with uh, Wood and Curran uh, to design a pump station control panel modifications for our, um, uh, our pump stations. Uh, this will provide us two means of controlling the operations of the pump, either through a level transducer or a float switch. Um, this will allow the on-call operators to switch to the secondary system when the primary control fails without the need of calling out our mechanic. Uh, we will test uh, this one uh, on one of our smaller stations, and if it works, we'll start making these modifications at our other stations. So, uh, we had uh, Camp Ketcher visit, visit our facility on July 7th uh, with about 14 kids that were attending their grossology camp. Um, I have revised our permit application, and I, a copy is included in your packet, and it gets a little more specific regards to the, the uh, type of service that is being requested, the flows amounts, and whether it's a gravity sewer or a pump sewer. Uh, on July 15th, we had uh, some severe thunderstorms and had several power outages, um, in, at, but we did appear to take a lightning strike at our Black Point pump station, pump station number hit eight. The strike took out one of the control boards on the generator, which was monitor monitoring the commercial power. The station transferred over the generator power, but would not automatically transfer it back once the commercial power was returned. So we had to manually transfer it back to commercial power. 
that that's been fixed, and the cost of the fix was about four hundred dollars. So it ended up being a minor minor issue. We do, Hale recently completed uh, the Operation Wastewater Treatment Plant um, course, Volume 1, that's offered by the California State University at, uh, at Sacramento. Uh, Rudy plans on taking the uh, Wastewater Treatment uh, Plant Certification exam this fall. Uh, Easton Village, uh, a couple other items that, um, at Easton Village, they replaced the uh, the culvert that crosses the Eastern Trail, which uh, just up from the old treatment plant, or pump station four, uh, we have uh, three force mains that cross over that. On um, so the the uh, the crossing, uh, the work began on Tuesday. Um, they worked until about 9:30 that night. Uh, we they ended up suspending our force mains off of. Um, some support structures while they excavated for the, the culvert crossing. They, they've, they've now have got the culvert in place and have begun uh, doing the backfill operation and um, they probably will complete that work tomorrow. And finally, uh, Matt Height from DEP, our uh, plant inspector, uh, came today and did his um, biannual inspection of the treatment facility and um, as, as it appears that everything uh, he was sat very satisfied with everything uh, at the treatment plant, which is uh, typical for the, these type of inspections uh, with Matt. So that is what I have. Thank you, Dave. Questions for the superintendent? Charlie. Um, on the building connection permit application form, we have a place for signature by the owner or the applicant. Um, I thought we had decided that we weren't going to accept signatures from, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, we were not going to allow agents to sign on behalf of owners since we... Yeah, we, we had talked about that, um, and I, I, I actually purposely left it on there so we could continue that conversation a little bit. Um, it, uh, in some cases, it does become difficult uh, with um, the owners being uh, not local. Uh, it does and I, I have gotten some complaints from some of the management um, uh, uh, parties that uh, that manage some of these these um, uh, modifications or, or permit applications. Uh, and I, I really just wanted to make the trustees aware of it. Um, so would the option then be to have those agents for the owners present us with written authorization from the owner for them to sign on their behalf? You do which that or just require them, well, which give rid of the, the agent ap requirement, the applicant requirement? I, you know, I just don't want to be litigating with property owners in mm -hmm. the future who say, I was not party to that. I know that was that was some engineer who signed that. You know, I paid him to get me what I need and I just didn't know that that's what he committed me to. Okay. So, I mean, I'm only one I'm only one trustee and mm -hmm. and I understand trying to streamline the process and in this day and age when people are doing everything electronically and trying to get everything done, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's uh, a nuisance for some of these folks to have to take the time and energy to sign a uh, individual application, and if there's another way to do it and cover us, I'm I'm certainly open to that. I just, but you no, know, I certainly can can take that off, and and you know, I modified it, and as I say, I kept it on the effort for the dis yeah. discussion. Well, I think the application should be signed by one or more people, whoever the property owner is, and if there's a leasee condition like we, we recently seen, that they should both be required to sign it and acknowledge it, and that no agents can do it. That way, you know, we, we don't get into this round and round thing that Charlie has, has brought out. And, uh, and, you know, the last time I checked, FedEx works one day in one direction and one day back, so, you know, the delay thing, you know, and, and you can actually fax an email quicker than that, I think. So I don't see why there should be any complaints or reason why you can't get signatures. 
Any other opinions? So. Uh, just a, a question on the uh, force mains. Um, something maybe you should take a look at is when we have those exposed, were those ductile iron or were those PVC force mains? We had one ductile iron, one PVC, and one permastrand. Oh, great. So you get the whole collection. Twelve, six, and a four. Yeah, that's a great time to do condition assessment. I mean, it's pretty easy if we can get our hands on a thickness meter or something like that to do some work on the, the bottom of the pipe just to grab some thickness measurements to see if we're getting any corrosion or anything like that. So just for next time. Nick? Just to follow up, I'm uh, out of curiosity, which three pump station force mains were they? Uh, uh, number two, which is at the on Pine Point at Easton Trails, yep. um, what all the staff called Road A or Industrial Park, um, uh, down on Washington Ave, down by the Public Works. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Might be nice to rename that station. What's that? Might be nice to rename that station. Road A, you know, Road A, they, that came from when the subdivision was being developed and there was no name for it yet. <laughs> they called it Road A. And I call it the Industrial Park Pump Station, yeah. but everyone else at the plant calls it Road A. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and the third was, um, oh, at the end of Commerce Drive, you take the left. Um, I'm blanking on the name of that road. Um, Evergreen. Evergreen, Evergreen Farm. Farm. Is that a private board? No, it's public. We own it. That's the form of that one. <coughs> so. uh, one. One last question. Yep. Uh, the smoke at pump station six, did we ever find out what caused the smoke? Oh, yes, we did. I'm sorry. Um, one of the pumps had a um, partial blockage, or the pump that was online had a partial blockage, which uh, uh, was hung up on one of the veins of the impeller, okay. causing an imbalance, in it, um, which ended up. Uh, Smoking, cooking the grease out of the bearing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No you, didn't, you didn't. You didn't explain that you diagnosed it. <laughs> you just went on from the uh, uh, to talk about the fire department. Sorry about that. Plan. So I just wanted to make sure that we knew what the smoke came from. In in addition to that, I was a uh, first responder on scene on behalf of the fire department. Um, what was great that was that <laughs> Glenn was there within seconds after I arrived. Um, we were able to isolate what the issue was thinking that it was one of the pumps, um, it was great to have Glenn on site there uh, as quick as he was. I do share Dave's concerns with the fire suppression system in the pump station itself. There was a malfunction uh, during the event that caused water to flow into the system, and I don't know if that's been diagnosed yet. Uh, yes, it has. It has, yeah. okay. Um, but with regards to the sprinkler system in the pump station, if that sprinkler system goes, we're going to be in a heck of a mess environmentally with a pump station that's down. So I know Dave has started to revisit things with uh, the fire inspector and so mm -hmm. forth for the town, but it's uh, definitely something we want to uh, pay yeah, close attention to. We certainly don't want to fill the pump station chamber with water. No, we right. do not. Right. And to answer your question, um, the, the there was no damage, but we ended up replacing the bearings just in you know precautionary. So now the fire suppression, is that just down in the pump vault, or is that also in the control panel room up above? It's the whole building. It's down so in, the, in the pump vault. Have, does, does, is, is it separated by zone? If we had a fire down in the chamber, is it going to waste all our electronic equipment on the top? The um, I'm, I'm actually have to rem I don't recall whether the generator building, which is where the control panel is, whether that has actual fire su fire suppressant or uh, the sprinkler system or not, but the pump chamber do does, and that's the one that I'm, I'm thinking. Um, I don't think the generator building has sprinklers. I think that just has a he heat detector. Yeah, I honestly didn't pay attention to that either. I'm surprised that it doesn't. If it does not, well, that's the most likely thing to catch on fire. Right. <laughs> uh, but I honestly, I I didn't pay attention while we were there as to whether or not it does, and something we definitely want to visit as far as yeah. the control system. But the system would operate 
without the control system in place, right? We can override the system. Mm -hmm. We're more concerned of the pump station building itself. The controls are in the generator house, whereas the pumps are in a separate building. Two two out buildings. Well, but if we one generator building and then the pump station building, they're two separate. On top of each other. <laughs> no, they're separate. They're separate. Sorry, that one's separate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There are two buildings that pump station. Oh, six. 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 I was thinking the wrong one. But some of our other stations are one on top of the other. Correct. The Correct. question is if you have fire suppression. And this is the only pump station that we have fire suppression at. Oh, so we don't have to worry about it. We'll just burn up the rest of them. Exactly. <laughs> and and that, that's okay. critical to Dave's decision in this point is that, you know, is, is there more likelihood of combustible material in the building versus environmental concern when the water dumps into the system? And Mm -hmm. It's pretty obvious to us what that would be, but apparently not when the building was Essentially, pump station sprinkled. six is the influence pump station for the whole plant. Yeah. It carries all but Black Point. Everything but pump station eight. We'd have to have a whole lot of George Libby's there. If <laughs> Depend on that fire department. Yeah. There aren't enough George Libby's. <laughs> no, there is not. <laughs> no. I was just going to back up for a minute. I, I didn't catch... How we're going to do those forms again? Is it going to be? I will get rid of. It. I, 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 I will modify it such that it's strictly the owner. Strictly the owner. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Everybody's clear on that. Any other questions for the superintendent? Um, we'll move Mr. on. Ch Mr. Chairman. Yes. Can I make a suggestion that we uh, modify the agenda at this time? Certainly. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for modifying the agenda. I would uh, make a motion that we uh, modify the agenda under new business to take uh, item B first and then uh, move uh, um, the potential executive suggestion session to after that. Mm -hmm. Second. Any discussion over that? Um, all in favor? Amending the agenda. Not opposed. Thank you, Rob. Uh, next, we'll move on to correspondence. And we have one item of correspondence. In Tigris Energy Service Proposal, I received one dated July 9, 2014. Um, as a result, uh, I reached out to another power supplier for a cost proposal for our energy. Um, as I mentioned in our last uh, meeting, i would gotten a notification from our current supplier to anticipate a rate increase from our current rate of about six cents a kilowatt hour to eight cents a kilowatt hour. And so I was just uh, putting out feelers to see what other suppliers are providing and actually the proposal I got back from them was for uh, nine cents a kilowatt hour, which obviously is higher than our eight cents a kilowatt hour that is currently being proposed by main power options. Didn't make any headway there. No. No. <laughs> of course it. Did you have any, just a quick question, Dave, did you have any discussion with them? I thought it was interesting that looking at the bid prices that, uh, on the SGS accounts, uh, that it was slightly going down with the longer contract period, but with the MGS accounts, it's going up with the longer contract um, periods. Were there any uh, discussions with any of the suppliers about what they think the projected prices are going to do in the future, whether people are planning for upward trends or downward trends? There's going to be a short-term spike in the energy uh, market, um, and then there will be a, um, a uh, they project a, a a leveling off and a slight reduction, not to current, uh, what we're paying currently, but it's uh, more, ma the issue is around uh, distribution. It's not really generation. It's, you know, they, they anticipate the uh, uh, improvements in the distribution grid in the, in the future, which would result in a little lower prices than the current short-term prices that you see in the um, the small small user market. Um, why it's different in the medium? I, I didn't ask that question. And I don't have an answer for you. So we're probably going to think about a shorter duration contract rather than a longer duration contract. Probably, yeah. Did they have any perspective on oil futures? <laughs> no.
All right, moving on to the next item is old business. We have none under new business. Dunstan Crossing, Phase 3. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to bring to uh, the attention of the board a potential conflict of interest. My company does work for Chamberlain Homes and specifically did the engineering for this project, so I think it might be best if I recuse myself from consideration of this item. Granted, thank you. Dave? Oh, okay. Uh, Chamberlain Homes is requesting district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from phase three of the Dunstan Crossing subdivision. This phase will be um, uh, serviced by a gravity sewer and tie into an existing gravity sewer of an earlier phase of the project. The phase consists of 41 single-family residential dwelling units on 41 lots, approximately 1,500 linear feet of gravity sewer and 11 manholes and sewer services to each lot. Uh, the sewer manholes and service line laterals within the public right away would be transferred to the, over to the sanitary district upon completion of the project. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The project is outside the original sewer service area. The capacity reserve fee is based on a single family residential dwelling units without accessory units. Any additional homes, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee per home is $2,859.10 and it is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Uh, the total capacity reserve fee due for the 41 dwelling units is $117,233.28. Capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer extension permit. A copy of the recorded subdivision plan be provided to the district in both paper and electronic form. All sewer services shall have detectable underground utility marking tape placed approximately three feet below grade, directly above the sewer service. A sewer extension permit is required. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension work. A sewer permit is required for each house. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. An installation of sewer service be inspected and approved by the district. And finally, the uh, professionally surve uh, surveyed electronic georeference CAD drawings, uh, stamped PDF for CAD drawings, and a stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Uh, second. Any that's, questions? That's with the conditions outlined in the superintendent's recommendation. Okay. Motion second. Any questions? Hearing none. All in favor of approval? None opposed. One abstention. Okay. So on to B under new business. We will recess to executive session for Title I, Section 405, mm -hmm. MRSA. I thought we had m the motion was to move the A, B to A. Yeah, recess. Okay. So we're going to recess to executive session for Title I, Section 405, MRSA, with regard to a legal matter. So moved. So in motion, right? Yes. Yeah. Motion in the second. All in favor? Recess. <laughs> 